box in front of you, or anything in box, I think multidimensional. I think of the line and the counterpoint, but I also think of the implications of the two lines together and how I want to, how I want to interpret the lines um, in a certain way, because the harmony is compelling. Is, is a harmonic dimension to this, as well as, um, as well as these lines going Well, he's across. the greatest harmonist of all time, in right. my opinion, you yeah. know, but it's, it come, it's a result of the uh, linear movement Right, you right. know, so you and so just to to analyze chord by chord, I think is you know. No, no, no. I yeah. don't ever do that. Oh, good. Oh, I, no, no, no. I never, never do it. But I think it's very interesting when he gets to the cadences because he has a certain serial quality where he goes through this, you know, these half steps here. You know, as you play it, if you don't study it, it can get very confusing because you don't anticipate some of these chromatic changes and the implications but of, what, the, of the harmony. I, I would prefer to look at it in terms of the movement, like the movement from F minor to his first right. cadence in A flat major, exactly, you know, or where cases. he lands. Well, yeah, where he lands. you have to know that. Yeah. I mean, the pianist, when you study it, you have to know, yeah, right, da da dee da in a C minor, what we're talking about that. You have to know that. Then he goes off. Well, it's interesting that he's, he, he has that major cadence in F minor when he brings in the tune in the bass. Right, right. And right. then, there, then the next major one, it would seem to me, is when is the cadence on A flat, some bars along. I don't know where that exactly. is. Your, your score, here. your wrote, score is unfamiliar here's to me. A flat. I wrote all those cadences in for myself. So when I teach it, I want the student to know. Here I wrote C minor. Here I wrote the cadence in A flat because that certainly orients the student to give them some organization of where eventually these are settling down at these various ends of phrases, right? Yep. I think it's extremely important. I, I think I wrote in I wrote in all that in my music. It was very important. Did you? But, but as I, t I believe I taught it, I told each the student to know each line and be able to sing each line uh -huh. and then be able to play one line and sing another line. That or makes sense. Or take the bottom line and play the, uh, play the soprano when it comes in. Uh -huh. You want to give us an example of that? Well, Let's Go see, ahead. when I was learning it, I st well, I did it on my video, but I started with ta di -a, ta di ta da then ta di and then the left hand continued the line. But of course I did it with the correct hands. Uh -huh. I, I always do it with the correct hands because I don't want the student later to have to go, oh, that's the other hand that does it, because they get too used to one hand doing it. Well, when, you, when you're just learning and studying it, I think you have to change, you're, the fingering is going to necessarily be different when you're doing separate voices than when you're doing voices together. Right, right, right. And do you ever have your people do two voices, different yes. combos? Good, that's well, that, great. Well, I, do the, I always do that. I do that even, yeah, I always do that. I, I want, if there's three voices to a piece, like... Now, what I hear is... That's what I wanted Beautiful. to show you. Beautiful. That's what I wanted to show you yeah. because when the harpsichord plays it more, it gets very articulated. Well, again, again, don't take what I played as the harpsichord version because I, I haven't been studying this piece. I was just sight reading it. It's been a long time. It's been like 15 years since I played this with the uh, guitarist. If you want to hear my interpretation, you have to go to that recording.
great thing about this piece is the build-up. And it reminds me of the Pasakalian Fugue. The Pasakalian Fugue, you know, it starts out with this, you know, kind of firmness, whatever it is, and things start building up to this big mm -hmm. thing. And this, does, this piece does that, don't you think? Yeah, well, I think they all do, but this this one is because it's it's had, had such a that that theme is so relentless, a um and so ominous, and it climbs like that, you know, so that it has a you know it has different emotional meaning than some of the other things, you know, some of the lighter well, it stands inventions. Out. It stands out because it's, there's such a, there's an atonality to it. Well, I wouldn't go so far. I would just no, go no. to say that it's a masterful contrapuntal writing. Uh, that's it's you know m m you know it's it's the non-harmonic tones. It's the way he keeps the line moving when the harmony is passed. You know, so the dis he's not afraid of dissonance. You know, I so, love that. Yeah, but what's so fabulous is here where he goes uh, sort of. Cha -da -di -da -ti -da. He has augmentation on top of that idea of skip step, skip step, but lengthening by quarter notes against mm -hmm. this. That to me is amazing uh -huh. because it's a rhythmic yeah, device. Right. And the rhythmic device, I mean, it's amazing because you feel now in two where you felt in four. Uh huh. And you see the augmentation on top. It's oh, I, I see. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's too totally much. He's amazing. too much. It's just like in the concerto. He has yeah. that. He has. The de da dum theme that is in the slow movement and in the fast one, the last one. And the inversion of the minor third to the major sixth. You know, in the beginning. And here he go drops down. Oh sorry. That's great. Uh -huh. That is amazing. When I first looked at it, I went, oh, it's upside down. Inver but then I realized it was an actual inversion of a minor third. It's actually, what, what's, what's that called? That's a mirror inversion. Yeah, is that what it's called? Yeah. But to me, that is extraordinary that he did that. So while he's doing that on top, and there's a name for it. What is the name where you take, more than augmentation, where you take a sense of four, and then you feel the, the intensity of going in twos? Because that's what drives well, that, that, that. Then, then it's harmonic movement that's causing that. Yeah, but yes, harmonic movement. But but but, you, but I think partly what's driving that is the um, is the stretto. It's bada body da da body. Those two. That, that's a kind of yeah. a, a, an overlapping thing. It's not really a stretto there, but it's kind of like it. And It's incredible. He uses every everything. Yeah, right? everything. I mean, it just stands out. It from does everything it does. I've ever played of his. Oh well, uh, I, it doesn't stand out from everything I've me. ever played. But among the Sinfonia, yeah, uh, I would I would go so far. Yeah, I would go so far. I think that's that's the top of the line there. The ending where I feel when I did my first YouTubing, I was doing gangbuster gangbuster ending. I don't know, maybe trying to be influenced by some other artists, but I said, wait a minute, when this comes back, this beautiful, da -da -da -da, it's mm -hmm. like you want to just like go to sleep, you want to you wanna simmer it down, you know, just simmer it down. I agree, I think it should, I think it loses energy. want to, after all this tumultuous build-ups mm -hmm. yeah. of that, you just want to... Well, it's just the, the emotional, uh, it, it, you know, tension is incredible in that. Mm -hmm. 